Diplomatic immunity doesn't cover a virus, so this year's UN General Assembly will be different. Motorcades? No need. Hardly anyone's coming. Impassioned speeches. Difficult, given that the hall will be mostly empty. Diplomatic speed dating in the corridors for some face-to-face -face time. A definite no-no. This year's event is virtual. Its centerpiece, world leaders' speeches, recorded. Turkey's President Erdogan wanted to attend in person, but was reminded that New York requires visitors to isolate for two weeks. Yes, even presidents. Normally, each country can have six delegates in the main hall. This year, it's just the one. They will have the honour of introducing the speeches of more than 170 leaders. We can then enjoy judging the backdrops chosen to see what messages they're sending, especially if there's books behind them. But of course, there's also the content. President Erdogan wants the world to see the energy dispute with Greece in his terms, and the brand new Japanese Prime Minister, Yoshihide Suga, needs to set out some foreign policy lines. We can keep a scorecard on who references the historic agreement between the UAE, Bahrain and Israel, and more importantly, who might hint at a similar move. President Trump helped put the deal together, but he's still trying to pull another one apart. He wants the UN to reinstate the sanctions against Iran, which were lifted following the 2015 nuclear agreement. Now, Mr Trump is no fan of the UN. He's already withdrawn from its Human Rights Council and UNESCO, criticised the World Health Organization and withheld money from the office which aids Palestinians. UN diplomats are nervous that their celebrations for the 75th anniversary of the General Assembly will be overshadowed by a series of broadsides from the American president, especially in his speech, because that's scripted, recorded, and not something which can be dismissed as an off-the-cuff remark. One of the week's themes is for a renewed support for multilateralism, something at odds with Trump's America First approach. The text of a declaration of unity on multilateralism took months to negotiate. It would only take a few tweets to undermine it. Then again, it can be argued that despite the lofty wording of the declaration, the UN members have undermined it themselves. Most took a unilateral approach to COVID, failed to live up to promises made in the Paris Climate Agreement, and they've fallen behind on pledges about sustainable development goals. Trump has a big target to aim at. The world's annual town hall meeting may lack the spontaneity of normal years, but it's still fraught with diplomatic difficulties. And with the US election just weeks away, the American president is on the world stage, but playing to an American audience.